Hello, this is Felix Felix. Happy New Year, and as the channel enters its fourth calendar year, thanks again for your support. I had intended to kick off with a stats update on the PI Gold Standard project and my nine sample portfolios from 2020, however the eToro stats haven't updated today, so I'm going to produce this stocking filler instead, and it's entitled My Top 5 eToro Popular Investors of 2022. Now the other day I produced some sample portfolios with the biggest winners of 2022, but today I'm going to take some people from that list and who weren't on that portfolio, but who I personally think have had the best year based on the criteria that I'm about to present to you. There's two really things that I'm going to be taking into account. The first one is risk adjusted returns. So I will be looking at someone's returns, but also their risk score and their drawdown and any observations I've made. Like they have, have they taken any gambles along the way or is one month kind of propping up the rest of the year? And I'll factor all that in and produce who I think's done the best in terms of risk adjusted returns. So don't expect to see too many people who have hit risk seven or eight here, even though eToro now allow you to hit risk seven and will only briefly ban you for hitting risk eight. Personal preference is the other one and it's to do with investing and trading style, risk management, communication, potentially even ethics, stuff like that. So this is different for everyone. And these are people who I like the way they've went about this year, but there'll be a lot of people who I haven't seen that you may prefer more than I do and there'll be people who I don't know about so obviously apologies if they're not on the list but this is my personal top five popular investors of the year just gone which is 2022. Okay coming in at number five on the list is Mr Stalky otherwise known as Yu Zhang. Full disclosure I have spoken to him on eToro and on my YouTube channel and he is a subscriber and channel member but I always find he has got great knowledge of the markets, as you can see from his bio here. Very well qualified and experienced, but also fantastic sense of humour. And his posts are really informative. In terms of his results, he's rebooted his portfolio in January last year. And since then, as you can see, it's done really well. Almost 22% last year. Obviously, the stats have still got one day, uh, day to update, but that was a market closure day. And you can see the reason he's in this really is low risk for most of the year and very low drawdown. His risk score has spiked up, but apart from in last February, it really only spiked as high as five. So he's not doing kind of loss chasing, high leverage martingale techniques. Mainly, I think it's because he keeps a lot of cash in his portfolio. But due to his risk adjusted returns and his communication, I think he deserves to come in at number five spot on my list. Number four spot is someone with a higher risk style, but someone who I also know reasonably well. It's Christian Rilkenwald, uh, otherwise known as Rilkenwald C. And he, when I initially set up this YouTube channel, was kind enough to record a video uh, telling me the do's and don'ts of, of YouTube, which helped me a lot. Uh, but that's not why he's in this list. He's in this list very much because of his returns. As you can see here, it's 45%. So he's going to have the highest returns of anyone I've featured here. And although his risk is high-ish, it never exceeded six, so he's not went beyond the kind of pale into seven and eight. Twenty percent drawdown is more than reasonable. He's actually used um, SQQQ and other shorting instruments the way they're supposed to be used, which is short term in and out. He has got smallish uh, positions in things like GameStop, and this Ape Coin thing was something that AMC gave out. But that is such a tiny position that has not been what's influenced his results. And as you can see, the GameStop's actually cost him money. So it's been the trading indices where he's using Elliott Wave Theory. And if it's good enough for the best trader on eToro, which is Good and Green Fin, obviously, or GNG Recovery, as she's called now, then I'm sure it's good enough for the rest of us. And Christian, I think, has probably been the best exponent of that theory, apart from said trader. So I'm definitely putting him in here. Um, although it's not a style that I personally am on board with, he's made a lot of profit with an acceptable level of risk. And I do know him, and I think he's a trustworthy character. He really knows his stuff. His YouTube channel's pretty good. You should check that one out if you can. So the next person here is uh, Dustin Helwig, just across the border from Austria into Germany. And he is called Finanzi Klen. And you see here that his posts are written in German. So they're a bit harder to um, kind of interpret because his translate function uh, doesn't sometimes do the best job on eToro. Well, that's the limitations of Google rather than eToro. But in terms of his results, that kind of speaks for itself. Uh, where he's got 16.8%, which is obviously an excellent return. But the most impressive thing is his risk score both average and max has stayed very low. Okay, he's hit five a couple of times, but generally he's cutting in at three or four. 
and his drawdown is exceptionally low at 5.4%. So I haven't really been watching him closely to see what sorcery he's producing to get those results. I would imagine a tightly hedged portfolio with plenty of cash on the side. But um, if you look, let's look at that. Yeah, there's no big spikes up and down Donvale style. So just basically for a combination of his returns, his risk and his drawdown, he has to be included in this list, even though I don't know him as well as I know Mr. Stocky and Christian. So he's number three on my top five PIs of the year. Number two is someone, Vasily Iliescu, which is Iliescu 2605. When I first came across him, I didn't have the most positive impression because he was kind of in other PIs, news feeds, um, in my opinion, trying to fish copiers, but I've definitely warmed him a lot since. I gather he also watches my channel. But what I've been really impressed with is, again, he's made 18% profit almost, but his risk score has been kept well and truly in check. It's never went above five, and generally it can sit really as low as one or two at times. His drawdown is 6%, which is exceptionally low. So those returns are not as high as some people who you won't find on this list, such as your Jordan Bores, Ins Insulin, Jacko, these sort of people. He hasn't got there by putting all of his money in the one thing or anything like that. He's really kept his risk under control, kept very tightly hedged. And it's not the first time he's done it because he did the same thing last year. So overall, uh, he does, he must be doing a portfolio reset there. Um, or it's empty at the moment. But he posts a lot. He shares a lot of stuff. He always seems to come up by my newsfeed. So I think he's marketing himself well, but without going down the realms of needless spamming. Um, although I'm sure if you, if you look, you probably find some where there's irrelevant assets tagged. But generally speaking, his communication um, seems to be doing the trek. Etor have also promoted him, which doesn't hurt. Um, and overall, again, a combination of returns, risk, drawdown, and his overall strategy. I don't think he's taken huge risks, or he hasn't taken really any risks to get to where he is there. So I would put him ahead of other traders who have maybe hit risk seven or eight and used higher leverage and been less hedged than him. So who is my top PI of 2022? And this will probably surprise you because I didn't include him in the biggest winners, and he isn't the biggest winner, but it's Ingruk, which is Ingvar Rukeman. And I would say by a mile, he's the one whose strategy I prefer. And it's because he's done this 8.7 doesn't seem like a big gain, well ahead of the S&P and other indices, but he's done this without leveraging, without shorting a plain stock portfolio, not even a lot of cash, hardly any cash, and you can see has produced consistent results throughout the year. Risk score has been very steady, drawdown is also very steady, so on those he comes up trumps, but what impresses me about Ingruk, and I don't really see anyone on eToro doing this, he's got a portfolio of 17 assets, all stocks, and yet he manages to be very diversified because there's only maybe one or two stocks from the same industry. It's not just all full of tech stocks. He's covering things you can see there like airlines, pharmaceuticals. Okay, it's not the most ethical portfolio. It's got oil, tobacco, communications. There is some tech in there. There is some more modern stuff like Coinbase, which is probably his only misstep of the year, Sainsbury. Um, so it's really covering the full range of businesses from brick and mortar to online businesses also geographies germany uk us um so he's diversified across geographies and sectors um he's also got high dividend for people that like that which as you know i don't but i think it's all these stocks are paying pretty much kind of five percent dividend yield or so um so that does give a cash income which he has stored some of that there and is ready to invest but just overall, I think he's really managed to do the Buffett style concentrated investing of having large-ish positions in his higher conviction picks, but having just that balance to the portfolio um, where he didn't need to do a lot of trading, he didn't need to do any shorting, he didn't need to take risks by using leverage, and he's managed to obtain a strong positive result, like miles clear, 28% teach points clear of the S&P 500, not that he only invests in US stocks, miles clear of the Nasdaq, like 40 percentage points or more, and doing all this without taking the risks that, to be fair, some of the other people who are traders, and especially Christian there, if things had went the other way, they could potentially have lost money. Whereas in group, the worst that could have happened is these stocks would have drawn down, which still keeps you in the game because you aren't gathering overnight fees. There's no margin calls. So all he would have done if they had went down in value would have just been bolster his positions next year. Um, and, you know, kind of 
wait it out until they they made a profit and obviously got dividends coming in there as well so personally speaking i thought that ingrook was the best pi of 2022 but i understand that people a lot of people will disagree with that and i'll just cut to my conclusion screen and we'll sum up the video so just to summarize here's my top five pis of 2022 ingroup coming in for me a clear leader Iliescu, a uh, respectable second. Finanzi Klen, who I don't know that well, but his stats speak for himself, he's third. Rückenveld C, a higher risk approach uh, based on aggressive shorting, but you can't argue with the results he's achieved with a respectable level of risk. And Mr. Stocky, with his new strategy, which seems to combine high rewards with low risk and drawdown, combined with excellent analysis and communication. So those five are people who I'll keep an eye on. And as I say, I've had conversations with some of them, other than ones I don't know that well. People have left out the list will usually be for the reasons that they've hit risk seven or eight. They've had high drawdown. I've seen them at times being fully committed one direction or another. And if things had turned the other way, could end up really nasty. Or there's been some people who have just stuck all their money in oil or similar to that. I wouldn't classify any of those as being the top five PIs in my list, but everyone's criteria are different. So thanks again for watching the video and feel free to disagree with my selections. If you think there's anyone that should be in there that isn't, or if you think there's anything I've missed and the people who have put in uh, are actually charlatans and I just haven't noticed it, then please let me know. As I say, one or two of them I haven't been following that closely, but just reviewing my watch list today, those were ones I picked out as of the best balance between risk, reward and the other aspects of having a consistent strategy. Thanks again for watching the video. See you on the next one.